Welcome to today's video. This video is intended to be a comprehensive pre-op guide for those facing total hip replacement. I had my total hip replacement in January of 2023 at the age of 55. My mother, who is 78 years old, had her total hip replacement about eight months after me in September of 2023. I'm going to go over this information quickly. Let's see if I can get through it before Mike finishes giving me a bath. If you're facing total hip replacement, first and foremost, have realistic expectations. Everyone's hip journey is different, and all these tips and all this information will vary depending upon your age, your fitness level, other health problems, the skill of your surgeon, etc. You might have a dream recovery, but plan for something more realistic. If your recovery is better than expected, you can celebrate. But if your recovery is slower or more difficult than you plan for, it can cause additional headaches while you're still trying to recover. For example, find a caregiver to help you for the first week or three post-op. The actual amount of time that you'll need a caregiver's help will depend on the factors I just mentioned. Don't try to tough it out by yourself unless you absolutely have to. And if you do, check out the support groups for tips and advice. Before surgery, be extra nice to your caregiver. Make some deposits in that emotional bank account because after surgery, you're going to be making some withdrawals. Plan to take as much time off work as you possibly can. And when you return to work, plan to do it gradually by starting off part-time. If your job involves a lot of sitting, sitting can put a lot of strain on your new hip and on the incision, so it's not recommended for long periods of time. If you have pets or children, plan for some help. For several months post-op, you won't want to pick up heavy objects, and that includes small children. You won't want to walk large dogs, especially those that are a little bit frisky or might pull too much. You won't want to get down on the floor to change a litter box, etc. Complete healing after total hip replacement can take up to one full year. See this video for additional information. <clears throat> Recovery will take a lot of time, effort, and focus for several months after surgery if you want the best possible outcome. Get as fit as possible before surgery. This will pay huge dividends in your recovery. Strengthen your upper body before surgery, because after surgery for several weeks, you're going to need that upper body strength to do things without using your operative leg. Things that you might take for granted, like getting up and down off of the toilet. Practice doing everyday things, like going to the bathroom, without using your operative leg at all. You'll see what I mean. Know what to expect in surgery and in recovery. It can be helpful to watch some of my hip vlogs or join support groups on Facebook and other platforms. Here's a good video to start with. You will not be able to drive for two to six weeks depending on many factors. For example, in the UK, by law, you cannot drive for six weeks after total hip replacement. Make sure you understand your insurance and how it will work with your surgeon, the hospital, your physical therapist, and aftercare. This is especially important if you're helping an elderly relative through this process. In my mom's case, she told us that she had Medicare and a gap insurance policy, so we educated ourselves and planned based on that information. But we discovered that in reality she had a Medicare Advantage plan, an HMO, so that added a lot of headaches and extra work for my sister and myself. Delays getting her admitted to an inpatient rehab facility, etc. Take care of any dental work, but be sure to check with your surgeon about any precautions. Address any pre-existing medical conditions that could hold up your surgery or delay your release from the hospital. For example, low sodium or overproduction of urine. Ask your surgeon when you'll need to discontinue all the medications that you're taking, and be prepared to challenge your surgeon if any of this concerns you. They often overgeneralize precautions, but you are a unique individual and every medication is different. I was freaked out when the hospital told me that I would have to discontinue all my meds two weeks prior to surgery, but this video provides an example of how I researched and challenged this. If you're a side sleeper, train yourself to sleep on your back. Although I was able to sleep on my non-operative side immediately after surgery and for several weeks thereafter, this caused some problems. Sleeping on just one side when I'm used to alternating back and forth caused some imbalances. For example, the arm that I was lying on really had a lot of pain and I had some tendonitis in my elbow as a result. This next section covers things that you should consider as you get closer to your surgery date. Buy stuff. Because our recoveries are all different, you might not need all these items, but it's good to at least be aware of them and think through whether you might need those. Thankfully, Amazon can deliver most items in one to two days, and if you get something and decide not to use it, then they have a pretty good return policy. A wedge pillow for elevating your legs. A grabber, or maybe two, one for upstairs and one for downstairs. Magic gel ice packs, specifically designed for hips. Optionally, you could consider an ice machine, but you need to make sure you get the proper pads for your hips. And while ice machines can be expensive to purchase, my understanding is that you can buy them used and you might be able to rent them. Check with your surgeon's office. Buy a toilet riser or install a comfort height toilet. 
Install some handles near your toilet so you can get up and down easily using your upper body strength and not your operative leg. A crossbody bag to carry things safely when you're using crutches or a walker. If your surgeon will have you start with a walker, you can get a tray for the walker. If you'll be required to wear compression socks after surgery, buy better ones than what they'll give you at the hospital. You can see what I thought of my compression socks in this video. For ladies, body-shaped leggings several weeks after surgery can help bring down swelling. Buy a long-handled sponge to wash your legs and feet when showering. For ladies, loose-fitting dresses are great. It makes it much easier to ice and do other things. You may need different underwear so the elastic doesn't go over your incision. Maybe boxer briefs. There are a lot of medications to keep track of after surgery, and many are taken at different intervals. So get a good pill organizer or a notepad and pen to keep track of what you need to take when. Buy a shower chair. Stock up on prune juice, because constipation is a real problem. For any work from home office folks, a lap desk with an angled top is great for working while elevating your legs. Make sure you have shoes that are both easy to slip on and slip off and secure while wearing them. Personally, I just loosened the laces on my regular tennis shoes. Do not wear sandals, slippers, Crocs, or flip-flops, and definitely nothing with heels, ladies. Here are some ideas for things to have on a table beside your bed. Water, lip balm, nail clippers, Kleenex, pen, paper, watch, cell phone, phone charger, earbuds, pills, strap to pull leg into bed, cane and crutches or walker nearby, extra pillows, a garbage can, a few non-perishable snacks, eyeglasses, eyeglass cleaner, hand sanitizer, and a channel changer. Another great idea is to get something like an umbrella stand and put that by your bed to hold crutches, leg lifters, etc. It might seem strange, but it's actually very helpful to practice before you have surgery. So do a test run of your toilet riser, do some laps with your walker or crutches, get comfortable with your grabber and dressing aids. Figuring out how they work with post-op brain can be difficult. My surgeon told me to practice in advance with the forearm crutches that they fitted for me, and I have to say it was great advice. On those practice laps, identify tripping hazards and remove any rugs that can turn into hazards when you're groggy. If you're planning to sleep on a different side of the bed or to wear different shoes post-op, then try to make these changes as soon as possible beforehand so that you can get used to them and avoid any risk of tripping or falling, especially if you have to get up late at night. Pick out the clothes you'll wear to and from the hospital in advance. Choose bottoms that are loose and comfy and will be somewhat warm because surgical centers can be cold. Reorganize the things that you use on a daily basis to be within easy reach. For example, clothing and coffee pods, things like that. Make sure you can grab them easily and don't have to stretch or reach or bend down to get into a low drawer. Decide where you're going to sit yourself for a few days after surgery. Your own bed, the living room couch, or will you maybe bring your bed downstairs? Where are you going to bum out for a few days? Some surgeons recommend laying on a flat surface, either propped up or not, as the best and safest position for your hip and incision. So don't plan on sitting for long periods of times in chairs or recliners. You'll want a firm surface, so if your couch or mattress are squishy, or if you have a memory foam mattress, you might want to look at alternatives now. Once you've decided on a spot, set up a snack station there. You'll be so happy that you have at least a few things there that you can grab without having to rely on someone else. Here are some snack suggestions. Dried fruit, nuts, protein bars, fruit snacks, apples, bananas, and if you can add a mini fridge or a cooler, string cheese, hard-boiled eggs, yogurt, etc. And finally, put a table and sign outside your front door for deliveries. Thanks for watching today's video. I'd like to thank the many folks on the various hip forums on Facebook that contributed their collective wisdom to these tips today. If you or a loved one are facing total hip replacement, I hope you'll use and benefit from these resources. Subscribe to my channel and set notifications on so you'll be notified every time I put out new content. Also, you might want to join my hip replacement support group on Facebook. I'll keep putting out new hip videos as long as I think I have something new and helpful to share. And I'd like to leave you with this one final thought. If you found this video helpful, then please spread the word. There are hundreds of thousands of people facing total hip replacement every year, and I can't reach them all. So if you know someone, a friend or a family member, or if you're on a hip support group and you encounter someone who could benefit from one of my videos, please let them know about it. I'd really appreciate it, and so will they.